Okay, my friends, uh, now I'm going to talk about another goal in life that I want to achieve and I want to achieve in the next 90 days, just like my health goal, financial goal, education goal, business goals, all that stuff. There's another goal which is very, very important as well, and it's a fundamental goal. Um, it's the pillar of big success if you want to succeed, not only in this life, but in the next as well and this goal is my relationship or my connection with my creator so um, how do I explain this to someone that um, doesn't even believe in God or anything like that well let's back a little bit let's take a few steps back uh, I'll tell you a little story when I was actually younger when I was actually a kid um, I doubted very much you know that God existed and uh, I, I had all these doubts going through my mind that I couldn't see any proof, where's the evidence and all that stuff. That's how I was thinking as a kid. And all the other kids at um, school were all saying, well, you know, religion is created to control man or control human beings. It's something that um, the establishment or the government created to enslave the people and there's no creator and all that stuff and that's what the children had in mind and in schools what they were teaching us was evolution and all these things and how we came from you know monkeys and all that stuff um, so you, you're being programmed at a very young age not to believe in a creator so I went on a search and I think I was about 13 or 14 at the time when I started to you know look seriously into everything and started questioning and listening to everything and I was very open-minded I was into yoga I was into judo um, I was into lots of other stuff as well and I would listen to anyone and I hanged around with um, you know people Hindus Sikhs you name it I went to the church I, I had a lot of Jewish friends and I wanted to know about everything from everyone and I read a lot of books, I looked into a lot of things, I watched a lot of videos at the time there was no internet or YouTube or anything like that so I was getting a lot of videos, tapes, audio tapes, I was really heavy into heavy metal as well and you know all that stuff as a kid and so on my journey and I, as I went through there was one piece of advice that my father told me and my father you know was working in the airline business and so I'd hardly see him but you know, he gave me one piece of advice. He always said to me, son, in life, you know, uh, when, when you're faced with anything, always consult your heart and your mind. And uh, whatever your heart naturally, you know, accepts, as well as your mind, it has to make, you know, logical, it has to be like logical sense. I mean, yes, this is, you know, it makes sense. You know, I can't be saying to you, one plus one equals a thousand and ten. And, and t tomorrow one plus one equals three and one plus one equals ten and, you know I can't be like that it doesn't make sense you always know that one plus one you know you add them together is two it adds up do you get what I'm saying here so you can't just be talking just like fairy tales or wishy-washy stuff it has to you know it has to be it has to fit in here and it has to fit in there at the same time not one and the other one doesn't make sense or or vice versa something makes logical sense but it just doesn't feel right your heart by instinct doesn't you know it's like a guide it's like a compass and it and it guides you to the right thing right so both have to agree so um i was always asking people where's the evidence and people always say the book so you know you take the bible you go through the bible and i went f through the bible from cover to cover and i spoke to all different sects of christians and uh, even priests and you know all sorts of people monks and you know the lot I, I spoke to everybody and I was listening to everyone and uh, what I realized that um, in all the religions in all the books that I read if you take out the stuff that doesn't make sense and it, and it doesn't fit in the heart and, the, and you, you get all the good stuff you know if you get the, the real juice inside the book uh, you'll find it a very small percentage actually but that small percentage kind of points at a different direction completely to what's actually being taught or preached by that religion. I found it very strange. Uh, like in, in the book um, by the Hindus, it, uh, it tells you, know that your Lord is one, but the wise call him by many names. So it's saying, it's actually telling you that God is one. So they're supposed to believe that God is one, not God is ten in one or a hundred gods or everything's God 
or all the animals as God, or a cow is a, a god, and a monkey is a god, and, and all that stuff. So it's completely different to what they actually practice, or what they claim, or the, or the followers claim to be their their beliefs. So it's a completely different story. Likewise, in, in the Bible, if you look at things, you start realizing that Jesus was bowing down and, you know, prostrating, putting his head to the ground and praying. Praying to who? Praying to himself. And so things are not the same as as what people are actually preaching um, out there, saying he's God and all that stuff. Because he never said that. Um, but apart from that, if you pull that aside and we ask a fundamental question, Where's the proof that this book, the Bible or whatever book, uh, is, is, is God's word, is from God? And where's the proof that God exists? Um, now, to do that, we need to, you know, you know talk to each other, because I'm, I'm a software engineer, I'm, I'm like into science, I'm, I'm going to be a computer scientist soon as well, and working for a PhD as well, and, and all that stuff. But, so I like things to you know, make sense here. So I'm going to give you a little example. This mobile phone. <laughs> now, if I made the claim that I created that mobile phone, right, obviously I didn't, but let's, let's assume that I'm making a claim that I created this mobile phone. And then all, every, and there's like a hundred other people saying, no, no, wait a minute. Steve Jobs is saying, this is my mobile phone, this is my creation. And another guy is saying, no, my creation. how can we prove who is the real creator? Who's the genuine owner of this mobile phone? We'll have to ask them a series of questions, correct? Obviously. Yeah. Now, I, I, when I ask that question to people, people will say, I don't know, man. You just have to believe, man. You have to s just feel it in your heart. It's love, man. And all, all that gibberish stuff. No. You have to ask some questions. You have to ask him maybe, you know, to, to, to describe how he created the mobile phone. And then, with that information that he gives you, whoever it is, all these individuals are claiming that this is their creation, um, they, you have to be able to take that information and verify it. It has to be information that is verifiable, not just like, yeah, I, I, just, I just like created it, man. It's peace, man. It's love, man. And it's just created. It came to being, man. Or it evolved. It used to be, um, you know, some ketchup. And then it turned into an iPhone. Come on, get real, yeah? So it has to be something that uh, is verifiable. You have to be able to research and then investigate that information and come back and say, yes, um, this is the genuine owner of that mobile phone. This is the creator. And you say, well, you, you are the creator. And you're given the attribute of being the creator of the iPhone, for example. Because Steve Jobs, then here you go, here's your iPhone. You are the creator. We recognize him as the creator of Apple or whatever. Um, so yeah, so it has to be something verifiable. Now let's make it even simpler. So you know, if people are, are like a little bit confused here. Let's say I drop this mobile phone in the street, right? And then somebody picks up that mobile phone and he says, look, whose mobile phone is this? And there's like thousands of people in the street and everybody's saying, wow, free mobile phone, free iPhone, great. I'll, I'll say it's mine, I'll take it, and I'll sell it, and I'll make some money. So everybody now is saying, it's my mobile phone. What would you do? If this was your phone, what would you do? And what would you say? How would you be able to prove that this phone belongs to you? First of all, you might say something like, you know, if you open the mobile phone, there's a PIN number. And that PIN number is 1234, for example. Yeah, let's assume that it was 1234. Somebody else say, oh, no, no, you know, you just say hello, and it opens up, and it lights up, man. And, and, you know, or someone might say it's, it, you know, it's 10, you know, 10, 10 or something, you know, gives you a different. And then th that person who's holding that mobile, has to be able to enter that pin. And if that mobile phone opens with that pin, obviously that's one, one question answered correctly. Maybe the next thing I can say, well, actually, this is my mobile phone. And the proof of that is I've got so-and-so contacts in that mobile phone. I've got this number. I've got... Um, you know, pictures, personal pictures, and whatever. And that, and you know, that person who's holding a mobile phone, he has to go through the mobile phone and look. Oh yes, you do have Mr. John. You do have Mr. Brown. You do have uh, so and so. You do. Yes, that's correct. So every single question that he asks, or the information that's given by that person that's claiming to own that mobile phone, can be verified and is 100% correct. Now, what if somebody? said, 
actually yes it's an iPhone I know it's an iPhone and he is not able to give you the the, the pin number and then might say to you one thing that's correct is like oh you know it has um, this number which is 07881 so 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 and by chance that number is there so he's got one piece of information that can be verified and it's correct but every other thing that you ask him about the mobile phone he gets completely wrong he doesn't even know the pin to open the phone he doesn't know he doesn't even know that there's pictures in the mobile phone. There is no picture in the mobile phone that he knows that existed in the mobile phone. You discover things. You know more because you can go through the mobile phone right now and you're looking at it and you keep asking him, oh, um, who's so-and-so? What number is your is your mum's number? And there's like says a, a, a number there says my mum. And you say to him, what's your, what's your mum's mobile number? And he goes, uh, I don't know. And you go, okay, so what's, the, what's your home number? And he goes, I don't know. Uh, and you go through the mobile phone, different questions, and he doesn't know anything. He just makes it up. So you can easily catch an imposter, and you can easily verify the owner. You get this, you're following this. Now, I want you with the same mind, the same kind of evaluation, the way you test things, right, to go through books. Go through every uh, religious book on the planet that you can get hold of, right? Go through it from cover to cover. Number one, you'll find things that don't even fit in the heart. And let's put that aside. You know, that things like, you know, you, you'll get some sickening stories about so supposed to be good prophet men, you know, men of God that are doing absolutely disgusting, filthy things. And these are supposed to be examples of humanity, the best of men. That can't be true. But if you look at the scientific evidence, where God is proving that it's his, his communication. These, this book is his communication, right? So if you go through the, the Bible, for example, you see, it, you see it, everything is unscientific. Uh, as science progressed, it proves that, the, that all the information that's in the Bible, 99.9% .9 of it is completely unscientific, untrue. I'm talking about not scientific theory, I'm talking about scientific fact. Like, for example, that we know that Earth is in flat. And when the Bible describes the earth being flat and like a table and it has four, you know, and legs and all that stuff, obviously we know it's not true. This was just the belief at the time when the book was written. Therefore, it's man written. If that information is there, it's man written. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that uh, plants can grow without light. We know how, you know, without the creation of, of the sun. It tells you in the Bible it describes the moon and the sun as two suns basically, two lights, two lamps. And we know that's not true. We know that the moon doesn't have its own source of light and the sun has its own source of light. The moon is a reflection. So to describe the moon as a source of light at night or a lamp is completely inaccurate. So you'll find a lot of things that completely contradict the facts that we know today. And every time we take a little piece of information from the Bible or from any other religious book, and we try to evaluate it and verify it, we get an X. We get, uh, 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 you know, it's like completely wrong. It doesn't add up. So therefore, we can just put that aside and say, well, you know, sorry, even if you get one answer out of a thousand correct, one out of a thousand you fail, but we'll put you aside. You cannot believe, you can't just say emotionally, man, and say peace, love, man, let's take some cocaine and let's get really high. It doesn't work that way, right? That's not true. But then when you look at the other book now, where I'm talking about here, the Quran. When I looked at the Quran, I found that all the books point to this. Prophesies a prophet, Muhammad peace and be upon him. And that's when I started to get interested in Islam in a big way. That's when I started like saying, wow, this is real. This is real. There is a creator and there's the proof of it. There is a book that claims that it's from God and can be verified. Every little fact in there is verifiable. As science develops, as science evolves, I'm not talking just scientific, everything, in every aspect, you can go away and take that little piece of information, verify it, and you'll always find that it's the best, it's the correct information, scientifically proven to be fact. So you have a lot of ticks, you won't have any X's. And in fact, in the book it says, verily, this book is from God, and it has no doubt, it has no doubt. It gives you a challenge. Find one mistake. It's not saying to you, you know, uh, find, you know, one correct answer to, as an evidence. No, it's saying to you, find just one mistake, and then 
nullify the whole book. The Bible, on the other hand, has, you know, I'll, 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 I'll give it some credit, I'll say one out of a million. One out of a million. And yes, there's idiots out there that are just like going, man, like this, like, you know, they preach, man, peace, man, love, man, and what rubbish. We have to grow out of this rubbish, yeah? We have to think of our head and consult our hearts and verify every information that we get, not just go out there and just like publish any rubbish or just talk or repeat what we hear from, from other people. We have to lead by ourselves, not be a follower. We have to be a leader. We have to investigate everything. Now, if you've investigated your religion or whatever you believe in, I don't know, if you don't believe in God at all, if you've actually done some research about this before you just follow, fall, falling into it, then fine. I'm not the judge. I'm not your creator. So I could, I'm not going to judge you as long as you feel happy to stand in front of a creator one day and answer for your actions and your beliefs then by all means you know you keep following or not believing or believing in whatever you want but all i'm saying to you you know research find out the facts you know investigate go verify the information that um you you have um step back a little bit to whatever religion you are step back a little bit and evaluate all the books if you want you know in research really do proper research into it and uh, you'll come to the same conclusion. I'm confident that 110% confident that you'll come to the same conclusion. Now, my goal, I, I went, I waffled a little bit here, but my goal is to really connect with God in, in a better way. I remember I was a lot closer than I am now, and I was practicing more, I was doing a lot of stuff. Now, for you that are not aware that Islam isn't a religion like, you know, Christianity or Judaism or whatever, it's actually a, a way of life. It's a complete way of life. Even Muslims don't know this. Even Muslims, even Muslim Brotherhood or whatever they claim to be, or any religious group, they, don't, they still there's a lot of people that still don't know that Islam is a complete way of life. Now, what do I mean by a complete way of life? I'm talking about um, something that you eat, you breathe, you sleep. You know your actions. Before people know that you're a Muslim, they can see that from your actions you have qualities, attributes, um, you know, you're positive about life, you are a, someone that creates goodness for others, you, you're a contributor to society. So people say, hey, this person is different, this person is, is something special about him, he's a really nice person, what is it that makes him that? And he says, well actually this is the teaching of, from the Quran, teaching from the Quran isn't about violence and that rubbish that's out there and all these people that talk about that, it's nothing to do with that, there's nothing of, of, of preach of violence in this thing, if you read it properly. I have a friend that was actually trying to collect all the verses that talk about all this, you know, violence and stuff, and he couldn't, he became a Muslim at the end. And he was researching how to actually attack the religion, and yet he himself was internally uh, affected from this. So I'm challenging you right now: read the book, find one mistake in there, and you know, come back to me, and you won't. And that's guaranteed, guaranteed. You will not find any fault with this book. You'll find all goodness and all the best things from this book. And that's why I'm telling you right now: I'm giving you an invitation to look at Islam properly, and so. And, you know, decide for yourself at the end. If you want to accept it, if you don't want to accept it, don't believe the media. Don't believe what people say. Remove all your prejudice from your mind and your heart, and just look at it with an open mind and heart. Um, I want to be a better person. I want to connect with my creator. I, I'm in a big debt right now uh, with myself and my creator and my my uh, my belief which I know for, for I'm certain, so certain, more than certain that I'm actually talking to you right now in the video, I'm certain about Islam as the best way of life. If you look at things, because um, I did research on you know economics, Islamic economics and that kind of stuff, um, and you actually, when I looked at it, I realized how beneficial it is, economics, I mean, the econo Islamic economics is by far superior than capitalism or any other economic system. So it's not just scientific superiority or facts. You actually find that the social system is the best, the economic system is the best, you know, political system is the best, legal system is the best, 
and uh, it's completely different than what's out there. You know, I, you, we can we can talk about each thing, but then what happens? The media brings on dummies and you know long beards and you know dresses and all that stuff, and they say they know about Islam and Islam is about chopping hands and stoning women, and, and that is nothing to do with Islam at all. In this book, it doesn't talk about stoning. If you read this book, it doesn't talk to you about stoning, adulterous and all that stuff. Does not, it's not mentioned in here. It's not mentioned in here. You will not find it in the book. So where did they get it from? It was the practice when the Prophet, peace and blessed be upon him, Muhammad, peace and blessed be upon him, when he moved to, uh, migrated, when he was persecuted in the place where he was born, Mecca, and he migrated to Medina, he found that the, the, the Jews at, the, at that in Medina, they were uh, practicing stoning to death of adulterous anyone that uh, performs any uh, uh, legal sexual intercourse or commits crimes and all that stuff. They had their legal system. So I'm not doubting that this legal system was from God and whatever. This was given to the people of Israel, children of Israel, you know, from Bani Israel you know, the, the Jews in, in, in Medina. So they were following their law. It was given to them from God. I'm not doubting that. I'm saying to you, it was given to it was given from God, but it was not part of the Quran the Quran. Islam came as a mercy to mankind. It abrogated the previous uh, laws that were given to the previous people that were living in the wilderness, an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth and all that stuff. You know, God then sent Jesus, and then after that, subsequently, He sent Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings upon Him. And in every single religious book I read personally, I found direct mention of the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings upon Him. I found direct, I found the story of the Prophet Muhammad in the Bible. I found it amazing how people can read the Bible and not become Muslims at the end. I found it, compl it just completely mind-boggling how you can actually do that. How can you read a book that tells you, you know, how long shall I be with you? Uh, uh, are you filthy and perverse generation? I, you know, I cannot be with you. I have to leave. If I don't leave, he won't come. And he's spirit of truth, and he will guide us all truth. And he, he is a man. He's a man. He's a man. He's not talking about some ghost and, and, and spooky stuff. He's talking to you about a man. You know, and it's talking to you about a true spirit is a true prophet, and a false spirit is a false prophet, and you know, whoever doesn't glorify me and all that stuff. And you look go through the, the Quran, there's a verse called Maryam, it tells you the story of Jesus, peace be blessed upon him, it says you the similitude of Jesus is like, it's like Adam, he said to him, be, and it was. There's a lot of good stuff in there, and honestly, if you can take this seriously, you'll be successful in every aspect of your life, not just financial and health, because the source of all success is our Creator. So, connection with the Creator is not just as equally important as looking after your health and gold and finance and all that stuff, but success and this particular goal that I'm talking about, religious and connection with the Creator, is by far more important than anything else. I myself lack this. I'm not a perfect human being. I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to evolve myself. I'm trying to be better in 90 days. So help me do this. And I'm certainly going to put all my best into it. And I'm going to try to get back to my creator and improve myself. And along the journey, I hope I inspire some people. Um, and I hope I didn't offend anyone. You know, you'll be surprised how much I take. I take a lot of rubbish. I get a lot of texts from, you know, Christian fanatics telling me that God sent His only Son to die for our sins and now everybody, you know, is pure and everybody will go to heaven. And it sounds great, you know, it sounds great like, you know, you press a button and you make a million pounds of that and you work and whatever and everyone would win a lottery tomorrow. It sounds fantastic, you know, you could do any sin you want, you could do whatever. And you st you still go end up in heaven like someone that doesn't you know sticks by the law and somebody breaks the law and nobody goes to prison. It sounds great. It's like wow, man, it's, it's great justice, yeah. But let's check the validity of that. Where did this come from? Where did this information come from? I mean, where did these people? How did these people get brainwashed? You know, honestly, it just people are so immature. They're so immature because. They didn't think, they didn't internalize that information, they didn't think about it. They didn't process that information, they didn't evaluate the book. 
they're just repeating, uttering what their priest or whatever the religious leader told them and they're just uttering it out. Ask them any question, they wouldn't be able to an answer anything. I've had people, I've tried to have an intellectual conversation with them and they run away. They run away. They go for vulnerable people that ha are completely ignorant. Unfortunately, or fortunately for me, I read the Bible, I know I spoke some verses here and there, I read some other books and I read this and that and I spoke to a lot of people. I had a friend that was working in church, I mean high up, I don't know exact level, I'm, I don't think he was a priest but something like similar to a priest and he reverted to Islam. I had people from the military, ex-military, they reverted to Islam. I had people that are traders, I met them in the Sunday market and they reverted to Islam. You know, I've got a lot of friends, I had. I have a friend that worked in the Pentagon. I mean, she reverted to Islam, her daughters reverted to Islam as well. Um, and you know, there's so many people um, I came across in life and I just basically shared with them the way I live life, what I believe and how beautiful this book is and how beautiful this religion is. And if they think about it, I'm not saying to you it's a great law and that's it, I'm saying to you this law is from God, but you just need to investigate it. You need to search for it because it doesn't tell you believe it. It doesn't. It, in this book it says there's no compulsion religion. It's not about me saying follow this and whatever. It's not about I'm not going to make any money out of this. I'm, you know, if you become a Muslim today, right now, I'm not going to earn any money. I'm not going to, like my bank balance is not going to go up in any way. This book is absolutely free of charge. And if you can't get hold of it yourself, I'll post you this book for free. No cost at all. But you just have to contact me and tell me if you want a book like this. Even if you're not a Muslim, I'm not sure it's not it's not it's not a condition. If you, you have to be a Muslim, whatever, or send me some posters and packaging and all that. None of that. Absolutely free of charge. I'll give you the book for free. I'll give you any information you want, absolutely free. Videos, I'll give you DVDs for free. No cost at all. You just have to ask me for it, whether you want it. Now obviously, um <coughs> I've had people in the past telling me not to give away free Qurans and all that stuff because people can misuse it and you know burn it and, and do all these things and take advantage of this offer but I'm telling you right now I'm going to give you whatever you want I'll give it to you free of charge and I'll give you all the facts to answer all the questions 24 hours a day I'm yours because this goal and this purpose in this life is for the creator number one you know God created us to worship him and I'm not talking about worship just like you know praying five times a day only work is worship and uh, teaching others is worship and uh, everything you do even sleeping is worship even going okay, bodybuilding in the gym that's a form of worship because that body you didn't give it to yourself God gave it to you so you have to look after it you have to look after the health so you can't you have to have a balanced life that is what Islam is preaching Islam way of life is a being holistic. It's like looking at the whole, all of you, your health, your mind, your, your you know your everything basically. And um, also your economics when you're doing business, you have to do it in an Islamic way. There's Islamic ethics. And um, I found Islam, you know, it, it's not it's not easy. It's not it's not like you know, it's just relax. Yes, uh, uh, God is merciful and He forgives you know, everyone and, and all that good stuff. But there's a, you have to you have to pull your socks up, you know. You have to go to work about it as well. You, it's not easy. It's not like everybody has a golden ticket to go to heaven. It's not like you know you become a Muslim right now and you go to heaven guaranteed. None of that. You don't get that guarantee at all. You have to work. Nobody knows whether their action will be accepted or not. You just have to be sincere because at the end of the day, you might see someone that's praying 24 hours a day in the mosque, but you know what? They probably could end up in hell they could end up in heaven you don't know because you don't know what's inside only God knows what's inside the heart so we should not judge people we should not judge people whether they have a big beard or a short beard or no beard at all we should not judge anyone we should not judge anyone maybe a girl might not be wearing hijab or a girl might wear hijab we shouldn't judge anyone because we don't know who's better than who we don't know in the sight of the creator Allah who's who's better who's superior who's who's excelling we don't know what actions they're doing in secret because that's more valuable when you give charity in secret is more valuable than giving charity openly in public and saying look at me I'm giving away a million pounds like you see celebrities do and whatever they do it for PR public relations just basically some marketing campaign
They don't intend to give money away. They don't intend to do charity. They're just doing it for PR, it's public relation. Just to look good. And at the same time, it has some self satisfaction. You get satisfaction when you give it some charity. So it's like personal. They're not doing it for the creator. They don't even believe in God, some of them. So, you know, have an open mind. Anyway, this video is getting a bit too long. I was trying to keep it short, but, you know, I got carried away because I'm really, really passionate about, you know, Islam and, and my connection with Allah. So I'm trying to be a better person. This gives you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm not a sort of person that believes in violence or going out and killing people. No, that man, this is completely wrong. This is nothing to do with Islam at all. This is nothing to do with it. You will not find it in the Quran. You will not find it in the Quran anything about stoning and cutting hands and all that rubbish. None of that, man. None of that. Islam is pure. Islam is good. Islam is all about love. You know, so you know, you check it out yourself. Don't just listen to me. Go check it out. Go do research. Go on Google and research, and don't listen to anyone that's outside there and just you know attacking and using bad language. Speak to the actual source. Go to the source, and the source isn't just like a Muslim or anyone else. It's a Muslim, whatever. You know, the source is this. This book is the source. You go to that source and look what this book is saying to you. See what it says in there. You'll see it's all beautiful stuff, the best stuff. The, you know, you you'll find the best stuff, even if you're not a Muslim. Even if you you see some of the good stuff in here, you'll benefit in your life. Whatever you implement from here, you will benefit. Economics, social system, you know, family structure, everything you find in here, it, it's just amazing. You know, I, I I read some of it. Sometimes I just open the pages at random like that, and I just read a little bit, and I wow, it hits me. I think man, this. This book is like talking to me, you know. Uh, you know, I feel like it's it's like the advice. Every piece of advice in here, I say, hey, how did it know that I've got this little issue? I've got this little problem. How did it know that this? You know, I just find the problem, whatever problem I'm facing, I find the solution right there in black and white. And I think, man, this book is just written for me. But you know what? You open the book at any any place and just read it randomly. Honestly, it will touch you. It will touch you. I can guarantee you right now it will touch you, it will change your life, it will change completely your whole thinking and you'll find that it's talking about love all the time, it's not talking about violence, it's not talking about anything like that, it's all good stuff. Um, I'm just uh, ashamed that I'm not a better Muslim than I should be, I, sh I know quite a lot, I've seen a lot in my life, I've been through a lot and I know what the truth is, 110% and every single atom in my heart is certain exactly of what, what Islam is and what the truth is and Everything. I'm so certain. It's just like I think if they, if I die and they cut me up in little pieces and they look at every single atom, they'll find la ilaha illallah wa Muhammad Rasulullah. I declare there's no God worthy of worship except Allah, and the Prophet is Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him. That's what they'll find in every single atom, every single molecule in my body. I'm certain of it. If someone out there just takes some. You know, like an atom and looks at it, you'll find that to it. I'm, I'm just so confident because in there I know, I, I just know 110% because I was searching. I was searching for the truth. Just like I'm evaluating businesses right now and I'm talking about all these things. Same thing. You know, that's why I feel I, I feel uncomfortable with Vaisalis and all that rubbish. You know why? Because at the end of the day, yes, you, you could be making money, but at the same time, I don't want to be cheating anyone. It just doesn't feel right. I, I feel uncomfortable with it because the teaching Quran tells you it's always speak truth, always do good, man. You know, like so. Why should I be trying to tell people to join a business just to make money when I know that I'll be making money from their joining fee and it's a scam and whatever? I can't do that, man. I can't get into that kind of stuff. I can't go out there and start selling drugs, for example. I can't do that because I know it's harmful. So it's completely wrong. So it, it, it changes your nature and so I'm saying, you know, like if you want to be a good person and you, you love the environment, you love people, you love life and you know, you want the best for everyone, you want the best for yourself and your family, then there's no other solution, honestly, from me to you, love, peace, respect, take care.